Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about whiteboard interviews. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do the whiteboard interview test for software developers really help test programming skills since that kind of pressure would not be part of a real job? Well, it is uh, probably well, depending on how you structure it and the nature, the type of person who is doing the whiteboard test and like the type of whiteboard board test we have, uh, it you might be very you are pro very right. Like it's not really reflecting reality, but at the same time, it's not completely bullshit because uh, let me give you an example. So if you are getting a whiteboard test where they're asking you to write an algorithm. The thing is that it might not be the case that they're testing you for the thing that you think that they're testing you for. This is one of those tricky things that you as the interviewer you don't really know because the test itself may have been designed not so that you can fix the problem and I've seen that happen. I've seen people give, get code tests where the problem can't be solved in the time that they have been given and the test itself is actually designed to test whether or not you can handle a sharp deadline and a problem that is uh, well it's too complicated to do in a nice way so you just kind of have to be pragmatic about the thing and so this is the psychology is psychological games that some recruiter recruitment processes and interviews and so forth play with you and in some cases I've, I mean I've been at a whiteboard test where they literally asked me to write the FISBUS algorithm on a whiteboard and I was stressed about the thing but I knew the FISBUS algorithm practically by heart so I could write it out and that's all uh, that's all they needed to know that I knew enough coding for them to like like their standards were super low because the thing is that it was like uh, all I really needed was to show that I understood coding concepts and that I had enough uh, experience to be able to deal with that uh, to even under pressure to be able to perform and the FISBUS algorithm is a very simple algorithm uh, there, there was no like really complicated problem here and in some cases I mean there are whiteboard tests where the whole idea is that you should prove that you can code a solution and you can kind of come up with a problem and then reason about that problem and communicate with the people in the room about the problem so there's many many aspects to it and sure as I was saying if you have someone who really is a complete idiot who tells you to I don't know implement a super super advanced uh, algorithm and then takes that as oh if you can't do that in a flawless way then you're a bad programmer I mean that's an idiot a complete idiot uh, that's hiring you and you shouldn't give them your time but if they if they are trying to figure out like just how well do you know this sort of problem because if you're doing a whiteboard test it's actually it's in many cases, the, uh, common for you to get a standard problem uh, that is just testing you. Like it's a very sh because the thing about the whiteboard test is for the company, it's a very cheap thing to do. It's very cheap because if you need to do a real type of environment, you have a lot of complications. And okay, now you need to allow people like what ID, like what editors are like. Uh, should they bring their own computer? Should they uh, be allowed to do it in multiple languages? And like you have all this other work that you might have to do in order to get a result out of the person. And m you may or may not want to be able to want to do that. And then there is one scenario where the whiteboard test is actually, I would say, the best thing which is when you're trying to figure out a person's a, a person's ability to to design a system that is a very very good whiteboard test because it, that's exactly what you want in because it's re, that, that actually does reflect reality when you're if you're going to play the architect what you actually are doing is that you're trying to map out at a high level how the system should interact and based on a specification which is usually the thing they give you okay they tell you like they play the stakeholders and they say oh we are gonna build this thing and that thing and then you try to guide them through guide them through okay so you want to build this thing all right that's and then you start drawing on the whiteboard and the thing that they're testing uh, you, once again it can vary what they're testing you don't know what they're testing this is the problem you can sort of suspect but you might actually be be wrong you have no way of telling what's going on in their heads 
So you just have to do your best, right? And so you map up the thing and you try to communicate to them and say, all right, I'm think you're saying this and that makes me think that, oh, we should do it this way or that way. And that is one of the big parts of being an architect. Like you, you're, the whole purpose of what you're doing is to figure out at a high level how the system should function. And for you to be able to do that effectively, you have to both be able to understand what they're saying, but also in a very clear way communicate your vision of how the system should work. And a whiteboard is the most natural way for you to do that. I mean, sure, some will say that UMLs and stuff like that might be a player in the whole thing, but I mean, for all intents and purposes, a whiteboard is a very good starting point when you're mapping out a basic system or even a, like when you're just starting off the conversation. So in an interview situation, that's actually a really, really good test that ref actually does reflect the sort of both pressure that you will be under and the same circumstances because you're go if you're going to be if you're going to show how a system should work for someone you're going to be in a room with a bunch of stakeholders uh, of varying background and you're going to have to figure out what they actually need like is their specification good are there any pitfalls and like um, threats or like uh, um, risks or stuff like that and then show them this is how I'm thinking we should build this thing and then sell the idea so it's a it's a very organic uh, uh, exercise actually so what I want you to take away from this is that uh, you are absolutely right that uh, depending on situation the whiteboard test might be a really shitty way for you to test whether or not someone actually knows how to code uh, I'm very sorry to say that it's still a very popular way to for uh, for people to test if someone has coding skills because it's a very cheap thing you basically just tell them here is an algorithm or here's a problem solve it on the whiteboard it, it requires minimum effort for you as the interviewer and even though you might actually lose out on a lot of good candidates who would do well under other circumstances you can still you can have the Google attitude where you just basically go I know that I'm going to lose a lot of good candidates, but I don't care. I only want the candidates who can handle this situation. And sure, we as the, in, like the interviewee might feel that that's very unfair, but at the end of the day, they're the ones who are hiring and they get to decide who they hire. In some cases, I would even say that that sort of stress test is actually a pretty good thing, way to figure out just how well someone knows something. Because if you're a little bit unsure and you're not really, like, and you're looking for someone who is like, pretty like solid in their understanding of something if you're solid both emotionally and in your uh, and technically you should be able to do this even if it might be a bit of a stress situation because there's really no guys there's really no way to make an interviewing process just completely relaxed there's always uh, there's always going to be some type of tension i've seen people who say Oh, we're just having a conversation. We're just being friends. I'm like, yeah, sure. We're being, we're absolutely being friends. And the second after, they start, uh, they take out a piece of paper. So, how do you feel about front-end development? Yeah, because that's not an interview question, right? We're just friends. Ugh. Just, just, call, just don't. Anywho, that's one part of it. But you also should know that there are many useful situations where a whiteboard test actually reflects reality. And it is usually when you're dealing with architecture. Whiteboard testing a person who's going to be an architect or someone who's going to be a, like a more senior experience or just checking if somebody knows how to communicate a vision of how to design a system. Well, then the whiteboard test is a very, very good exercise. I would even go as far as to say it's probably my favorite exercise because it really captures exactly how you're going to go about it in many cases. Have a great day.